Tracy Gilchrist. I'm with The Advocate. Hi, Tracy. Nice Hi, to Tracy. meet you. Hi, it's good to meet you. Uh, well, first, I want to say that I tore right through high school. I loved it. Uh, and Susan, you're terrific in it. Um, Thank you. So good. And I want to go to you first, Tegan, and ask you a little bit about what it's been like to see this project come to fruition and not just to see it come to fruition, but helmed by Cleo Duvall, your friend, and then uh, Rayleigh and Season playing you and Sarah, and then Kobe Smulders oh. playing your mom. I mean, it just gets better and better. And Don't even uh, get us, don't get Season and I talking about Kobe, because that's all yeah. we'll talk about, so. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I wonder, uh, would you talk about what it's been like for you? Yeah. Yeah, look, I mean. I Sarah said the same thing. <laughs> he did? Okay, good. Yeah, Essentially. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> look, you know, it's surreal to, I think, it's surreal to me that we even have a music career still. It's so hard to be in a band and keep going and to find new inspiration. And so to have the opportunity to write a book was just surreal. Now that the book is a TV show is completely absurd. I mean, we're just so lucky and grateful and and truly, truly, truly um, humbled to be able to make art for a living. I'll start by saying that. And Clea has been such a wonderful friend and a great collaborator in the past. So she was just, it was a no brainer that we were going to have her be involved and um, I'm so appreciative that along our journey of, you know, developing the show and and finding Laura Kittrell, that she was just on board and so patient and so understanding as Sarah and I sort of worked through our issues of like what should be on screen and what shouldn't and how to fictionalize our story and um, and everyone's patience and understanding and humoring us that season and Rayleigh were the twins to play us, you know, and we were really aggressive about that because there's something about them that's very special. They're so watchable and they're portraying people who had not yet figured out who they are and had not figured out yet their art or their, or their instrument. And so the fact that they weren't actors and musicians actually made them perfect to play mm -hmm. up because you can feel them finding themselves in, in, the, in the show. And they're so talented. I took them to the studio one weekend after another to record all the Tegan and Sarah songs. And as soon as they started singing, the engineer Russell turned to me and was like, yeah, they're really good. And I'm like, yeah, they're better than us. So it's like, <laughs> it's just amazing. It's surreal. I'm so happy to be a part of the, the, the show. I think it's such an important show and I'm so grateful that it got made. And I'm just so proud of, of season and, and Rayleigh and just so happy for Clea and Laura, because I think they've written a really beautiful show. Yeah. Uh, agreed. Agreed. Uh, thank you. And uh, season, with all of these new, new experiences that you've taken on to uh, play Sarah, um, I wonder if you would talk a little bit about what that's been like for you. I think it was, it was an amazing experience. I think for this to be my first experience in the industry at all was, I got so lucky for that to happen to me because not a single person like on the, on the cast or the crew was like, rude or anything everyone was just amazing on that entire thing and um it was just full of talented and amazing people and i just wouldn't have changed any of it yeah great thank you and uh, tegan uh, i interviewed clea we ha actually have a piece uh going into the advocate about high school uh for this upcoming issue uh, oh. so when I spoke with her, we talked a lot about the 90s, capturing the 90s and the timelessness of it. And there's something really beautiful and relatable, I think, uh, that's going on in the show, which is uh, this arc of you and Sarah or Tegan and Sarah um, discovering their sexual identity simultaneously, but, you know, alone. And I think that really is something that kids today who have a lot more visibility and a lot more they can turn to uh, could there are kids who are still feeling isolated. And I think that's going to speak to some of these queer kids. And I wonder if you would talk a little bit about what it means to you to put this out in the world, knowing that it could make someone feel maybe less alone. I mean, look, it might be too bold to say, but I think sexuality across the board is awkward. I think mm -hmm. being an adolescent right. and exploring your sexuality is very stressful and it's a lot of pressure. And we've seen thousands of films and television shows that depict the awkwardness of this. And I just don't think we've had that many that have depicted the awkwardness of being a queer teen doing right. that, you know, especially in this way, which is gritty and real. And it's not, it's not like overly sexualized, but it's also not neutered in this way that we often see in teen films about queer sexuality. So, you know, I think um, 
when we were writing the book, we tried to keep that top of mind. When we went out and sold the book, that was what we said to publishers. Like, we are not going to dumb down our story or make it safe and PG for people. Like, we were experimenting and it was intense. And um, yeah, and I think like kids these days, I think I'm, it's so awesome to hear you say that, Tracy, because I don't think it's easier for kids now. Mm-hmm. I think there are some things that are different. And I mm-hmm. think there are some of the fear and maybe the stigmatization of being a queer or being trans is slightly less intense maybe for some kids, but generally Mm -hmm. speaking, coming out, talking about sexuality is awkward. It's weird. It's uncomfortable. And I hope that, you know, when people watch the show, they can also see the good sides of it. I think Clea captured so beautifully with her direction, the longing and the like, the like of just everything, like not even your girlfriends, just like your friends and what that's like. And I think season and Rayleigh both play that longing and that experimenting, like in a way that's so classy and so beautiful. And like, even in the moments where it's like awkward, like it was so funny to be on set and have to poor season, have to watch her like making out with Olivia, like not poor season because Olivia is very, very attractive and wonderful, (laughs) but that's awkward as hell to have to do that in front of so many people. But I think it's like, it just all came together so beautifully in the show. And yeah, I just, I I think this is just still such a worthwhile tale. Like, like so much has changed since the nineties, but sex and sexuality, they're still so intertwined in this way. And so it's like awkward, like saying I'm gay is like drawing a diagram for people about what sex is. And it's just, it's so awkward and weird. And yeah. Yeah. I just want to start uh, by asking a kind of general question about what your reaction may have been when you first heard about this project or read the script. And uh, I will go to you first, Kyle. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it came to me kind of as it, these normally do, just so, like, here's an email, here's a script that's being, um, you're, you know, they'd like to talk to you about. And those are always different. Sometimes you really like the people and you want to like the project better. Sometimes you like the project, but you don't know anyone involved and you take a leap. This one was hit perfectly funny the minute I started reading it I wasn't familiar with Tegan and Sarah's story I knew them as artists but I didn't know they had written a book I didn't know that they had this story um so I deep dived as soon as I read the script I told my team I wanted to you know I wanted in on this and um it was just so tenderly written so um empathetically written obviously from a place of experience from Clea who then was taking you know was adapting uh, a really personal experience from Tegan and Sarah and that just came through in every every line of dialogue, every, every line of description, it was, it was there. And I love the nineties. So that was an easy call for me. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I love the nineties the world, the nineties that Clea was creating, which was Antigua and Sarah lived through along with myself, which was the indie, the indie rock, indie movie nineties was my, was my uh, sweet spot. So this was one of the easier calls I've ever had. To make. <laughs> right. Thank you for that. And, and Kobe, I know you, you've worked with Clea Duvall, Duvall before, so I imagine that may have been a part of it, but I, I wonder if you'd talk a little bit about first encountering this project. Well, you know, it's funny. Um, Clea first told me about it when we just went out one day for lunch and she told me about the book and she was, she was in the process of writing it. And, you know, it's, it's funny to be friends with somebody who is also like so talented because you want to be like, Clea, I would, I'm going to be in it, right? Like, I want to do this. And, um, but we were both playing it very cool. And she was so cool about it. In fact, it was like, she doesn't want me to do it. It's totally fine. She's good. It's totally fine. (laughs) And so, you know, when she came to me, um, which she did very professionally through the the Hollywood channels of agents or whatever, um, I was really, uh, I was really excited and, um, I just, I love working with her so much. I think she's so talented. So for me, it was very like, of course I want to do it. I don't, I don't even need to read it really. Um, I want to work with you. And then I of course did my due diligence and I did read it and I read the book, um, before really reading the scripts and it's just such a beautiful story and to piggyback onto what Kyle was talking about. It is, it, it was so nostalgic for me just reading it. I grew up in Vancouver, Canada. This took place in Calgary, just one province over. And um, so it was very, uh, it, it was just very similar. Um, just the, the music and the vibe and, and the sibling rivalry, all of it. It was very, um, very akin to my own experience. So, um, and I just, I love Tegan and Sarah as performers and as storytellers. And so I was just, 
I was in it kind of from the get-go, even when I wasn't asked to do it. (laughs) 